On today's video, we're going to be speaking about creating chemical compounds. As you may remember from different classes, compounds uh, in chemistry, in inorganic chemistry, are created essentially with two pieces. A cation, which represents a positive part, that means that it donates its electrons, and an anion, which is basically the opposite, or the part that accepts electrons. Now, when we're speaking about creating chemical compounds, what are some of the common cations associated with creating chemical compounds? I would group them in metals. Uh, another possible cation would be, in general, hydrogen. And another would be non-metals. And for all intents and purposes, non-metals uh, also include metalloids for this category, right? And in the case of anions, there are many types of anions, but today we're going to be talking about five specific anions. The first uh, type of anion we're going to be speaking about is non-metals, which also includes metalloids. We can also use hydrogen as, a, as an anion with its negative charge. We can also use oxygen. We could use hydroxide, which is a polyatomic anion. And last but not least, a specific type of anions which are called oxyanions, which I'll explain further on. With the combination of this positive and negative part, we can get many different types of chemical families. So, for example, let's start off with a simple example. Let's say we have a metal, and I'm going to continue with this color structure that we have here, referring back to this chart. Let's say that we have magnesium. And remember, it's good to have a periodic table so that you can predict many of these things, or simply just do the math mentally with the valence numbers. So for example here, I don't know if it's in focus, but we have a table chart with different valences and oxidations, which is relative to a periodic table. And let's begin with combining something simple, metal with non-metal. So in this case, we're gonna take magnesium and magnesium is located in the second column of the periodic table, meaning that it has a plus two charge. So that's my positive part. And for the non-metal, let's choose something simple, such as sulfur. Sulfur has a negative two charge, usually. Where do we get this from? As I said, we get it from an oxidation table, or some are easy to memorize or predictable. And then once we create the compound to create something called neutrality, or electroneutrality, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna crisscross these numbers, and we're going to create a chemical formula. So then we would need two magnesium atoms, and we would need two sulfur atoms. So in this case, since we have a double two, we're going to reduce this, and since we don't write my, uh, number one as a subscript, we're only going to write MGS as our final formula, creating magnesium sulfide. So whenever we have uh, metal as a cation, and a non-metal, as an anion, the result is, uh, these have different names, they can be haloid salt, which is synonymous to binary salt, which is also synonymous to halide salt. Why? Because most of them are made from halogens. So a quick example would be, let me try another one, we have a metal such as sodium, which has a plus one charge. We take a non-metal like chlorine, which is in the halogen family. We do our crisscross. And once we do our crisscross, we get Na1Cl1, but the ones are not written, so we get NaCl, sodium chloride, which is basically table salt, the salt we use for our food. Table salt, and this is also a halide salt. Let's try another simple example. Let's say we have the cation manganese. And there are many different types of manganese. You can check that out on the periodic table or on the valence or oxidation chart. And we take a manganese atom that has a plus six charge and we combine it with nitrogen. And nitrogen has a negative three charge. So again, we do our crisscross. And once we do our crisscross, we rewrite the formula and we get 
nitrogen six, but since these numbers are reducible, we're gonna reduce them again, and three turns into one, so we don't write it, and six turns into two, right? So what do we get? Manganese six nitride. I will tell you a little bit more about the naming eventually, and right now we're gonna keep on doing some more examples. So this is halloid salts. I'm gonna give you another example, which is very important right now. Uh, any compound where the cation is oxygen is always gonna have a minus two charge. Where the, cation, where the anion is hydroxide, we're gonna always have a negative one charge. And when we have hydrogen as a cation, as an anion, it's always gonna be negative one. So then, if I can choose my metals or other things from this source, what do I do? Let's choose some metals randomly. Potassium, which is plus one, uh, gold 3 which is plus 3 and for example calcium which is plus 2 so whenever I mix these two again I'm going to do this really really quickly so that you guys can have a quick review and we're going to have K2O1 the one's not written so we have K2O potassium oxide same thing AU we take the two from here from the crisscross O3 this would be gold 3 oxide. I will explain this further on in a naming video. And finally, when we exchange, calcium has two, oxygen has two, and when we reduce this, we get CaO2, get that electron neutrality. I'm gonna circle these so that it's easier to identify our final uh, formula, okay? And what are these called? Whenever I have a metal and I have an oxygen atom, we have something called oxides, which are metallic oxides or you can only call them oxides that's good then same story this is minus one plus one minus one is going to cancel out so we get KOH potassium hydroxide here gold is going to get one but we don't write it down OH between parentheses because this whole thing counts as what as minus one this is AU OH parentheses three and last but not least we get calcium parentheses OH and we get a number two, potassium hydroxide, gold three hydroxide, and calcium hydroxide. And these are called hydroxides, as their name suggests. Mm -hmm. Next, we have the same mixture. Um, hydrogen is minus one, potassium is plus one, so we get KH. Next, we get this negative number from here, just as we did with hydroxide. We get AUH3, no parentheses, because this is a single atom. And last but not least, CAH2, which is potassium hydride, uh, gold 3 hydride, and finally, calcium hydride. So this chemical family is called hydrides. So remember, metallic oxides is metal plus oxygen. Um, hydroxides are metal plus hydroxide anion and last but not least hydrides are metal plus hydrogen hydrogen anion I'm gonna cut the video right now so that we uh, begin a second video where I explain the rest of this chart